The Natural History Museum in London is the National Museum of Nature and a centre for scientific research. School visits to the museum are free of charge and with over three million visitors a year, it's one of the most popular museums in the country. Rodmel Primary School in East Sussex is planning a school trip to the museum. On Wednesday we're going to the Natural History Museum and there's some things whilst we're there, rather than just going to visit and looking at everything, there's some things I want you to think about in particular. They are looking into the ways animals move, with special attention to birds, butterflies, beetles, snakes and fish. I don't know what this is. I teach in Key Stage 2 and I teach Year 3-4 and at presently we're doing a topic on habitats as a science focus and I've been linking this across the curriculum to make cross-curricular links. What sort of things did we find when we did pond dipping, Miles? Um, sticklebacks, water beetles, tadpoles, frogs, newt. And I think that's all. As part of our science activity, we've been doing a dance link to animals. And we've also linked this to the visit in the Natural History Museum, where the children have focused on these particular animals and seen how they've actually moved, find out specific um, information about these animals to help them improve their designs and their dance back at school. What could you do? What do you think? What skills could you use to help you work that out, Jesse? Research things. Research things. So in preparation for the trip, I actually went on to the Natural History Museum website and read up on the risk assessments. The information for teachers was really helpful. Um, it broke down some activities that we could do before the visit, um, which I undertook with the children, um, gave the children homework linked to this, and they could take the site home and follow up information before and after the trip. Lots of museums have natural history collections, so it's always worth going onto the museum site to find out what museums there are in your region. And if some of them don't look as if they immediately have a natural history collection, it's always worth ringing them up because lots of them do have natural history collections in store. We have a lot of resources for schools on the internet. Some of those are activities. For example, walking with woodlice is an online survey. But also, in terms of preparing their visit before they come, um, a lot of our resources are online and teachers can download them and use them to familiarise themselves with the visit. The education packs are really useful because they set out all the risk assessments and all the things that you could possibly need before the visit. Taking a class of children to London is a challenge for any primary school teacher. So it helps that coaches can pick up and drop off for 15 minutes in front of the museum. It's also worth checking in advance where the class can leave coats and bags and where they can eat. The ones on this side are alive and all the ones on that side at the top are extinct animals. One of the big advantages for schools is that our big special exhibitions, which normally cost about £10, £8 to get into, school groups, if they book, can get into those for free. The Creepy Crawlies exhibition is free to all visitors and includes live animals, giant models, interactive displays and puppetry. Here we go. Now, Ozzy B is going to let you have a little smell of the pollen. Well, I work here both as a puppeteer and storyteller, but chiefly I also think of myself as an educator. And, of course, one of the things about puppets, which is really helpful, is you immediately can get the children's attention. And once you've got the children's attention, then they can engage in the activity and, and you've got them there and their concentration will stay with you. What do you think? My storytelling is very pantomimic. With the Busy Bee Workshop, that's activity-based more than storytelling and so the children are actually actively involved in the activities for example you saw the bit with the blindfold going onto the children they were picking the insects out and trying to work out what mini beast or creatures they got in their hand they actually also use their senses they not only sight but also I have a lot of activities which involve smell so there's all sorts of different areas that I involve the children in when we first thought of Busy Bee, we actually thought it was for nursery and Key Stage 1. And we found that Key Stage 2 children love it too. The patterns and how the wings are set out, that when you do the dance, you can see if you can make some improvements. 
The handing trolleys really act as focus points in the galleries and quite often the content on those handing trolleys actually relates directly to the gallery as well. So it really makes a focus point for visitors so that they can directly access that material and often they get to look very closely at specimens. Um, and the great thing about them also is that there are always two explainers that work on those handling trolleys. So they can ask us questions, they can interact with us and quite often they just want to tell us their own experiences about certain specimens that they see on the trolley as well. The staff within the museum are really helpful and they, they help the children to identify all the different animals and artefacts. They're very knowledgeable so even as a teacher if that's not your specific strong point you can feel confident that there's lots of people there to help you. The good thing about well-resourced national museums like this is that they can have specialist facilities for educational purposes only. Welcome to the Natural History Museum, everybody, and welcome to Investigate especially. OK, now, what do scientists do? Most teachers bringing groups to investigate um, will make a planning telephone call very often. They'll speak to me or they might speak to one of my team or one of the other program developers within the learning department here. And then we can tailor, to a certain extent, we can tailor the session that the explainers run for the school group um, to the teacher's particular desires, to the aspect of the curriculum that, that they want to do. Snakes and butterflies. Fish and one more. Birds. Birds, OK. I, I want you to have a good look around at all of the other things as well, but look specifically at those and see, when we go back to school then, we can see if we can adapt our dances in the light of what you find as being scientists, OK? We get a variety of age groups in Investigate. In fact, all the way from young primary school children right the way through to um, university students, different audiences do different things in the space. So use your senses. That's one part of the observation. So that's what scientists do. That's what we want you to do here. So remember, the observation, the questions, and the finding evidence. You can also make some drawings. And that's what lots and lots of scientists do. They're very, very good at drawing, because by drawing, you're forced to observe closely what you're studying. The introduction that was given to those children in Investigate, which was introducing them to the skills of the scientists. You could do that in any museum. You can apply that to an art museum or a history museum. So it's the skills of the scientists, but it's also the skills of the artist and of the historian. Shall we? OK, we take the feather tray. Isaac, shall we have a look at these? Perhaps, Ryan, if you come with Isaac, you can look at these. A six-year-old coming in might simply have a tactile experience of a number of different specimens. They might stroke the python skin. And that might be the limit of their experience within this space. That might be what they come in to do, simply to experience some shapes, some textures. Whereas we get undergraduate art groups who are brought here to do drawing from life because they can get really close to the specimens and that's quite an unusual thing within, within a museum setting. It moves quite fast and it wriggles quite a lot because it goes like that. It feels really smooth and soft and bumpy. When we're actually looking at them from a museum, it, it looks really different than just having to think and look at pictures, because it's actually seeing the real thing. I think it's been really fantastic because the children have had the chance of being scientists and quite often they like to be just given the answers rather than actually exploring. And I think that it will fit in with lots of different areas of the curriculum, certainly ICT. And when we go back, we're going to follow up and do some things on branching databases and making leaflets linked to the uh, museum. And the children are going to talk about their experiences as being scientists because rather than assuming that they're just going to get the answer, today has really made them take a step back and look at things and ask themselves questions. So why do you think they do camouflage? So they can hide from other animals right. and they eat them. Good, so they're hiding away so they won't get eaten. Well as well as meeting and facilitating learning experiences for groups of school students, we also provide CPD sessions for teachers and, we've also, and for other learning professionals. So you group them all together, which is great. 
And now you can draw what you see under the microscope, OK? We know that the more confident teachers feel about a venue, the more that they and their class will get out of the visit. So one thing that we're planning is twilight sessions for teachers where we can introduce teachers to the museum and they can find out more about what we offer and how it might be suited to their needs. And also when we launch galleries, when we reopen galleries, um, as we do quite a lot of gallery refurbishment, then we hold teachers' evenings so that teachers can understand how to use the galleries as well. Vivian's just pointed out something really interesting. She said the way this is written is like our shape poems that we're doing about the animals at school. So that's a really good observation, and, um, Vivian. It certainly would be really useful to go to twilight sessions because it's nice to um, find out about the museum before turning up and what, what's actually on offer because there's so many different facilities there. It's not just national museums who do that. Lots of museums do run sessions for both teachers and pupils um, after school and at the weekends. And it's something that, that means that children have opportunities to learn from objects and collections, not just during the school day and not just in a formal education setting. I think the thing that we most enjoyed was the investigate session because the children really became scientists. We could touch things and um, look at things that we don't have at school. I'm pleased to hear that. Did you all have a look at and investigate and touch something that you'd never looked at or investigated before? Yes. yes. Awesome. Did you have Lots of teachers do use um, and can use museums to support cross-curricular learning. So one can use a science museum not just to study natural history, but also to study literacy, to study maths, to study um, the environment, and also, of course, to do sort of wider um, social skills and developmental skills and citizenship and PSHE. Another possible curriculum link is to the creative arts, as demonstrated here, with the children using their museum experience to inspire them to put the finishing touches to their costumes. Mine is a beetle and there's three different beetles here. There's one there and one there and one there. Instead of just like thinking about normal beetles, you can think what they kind of more look like. They move quite fast, scuttly kind of way. I went into the trade. I had a look at all the patterns of the butterflies and I got lots of ideas and I found out that the way that butterflies move and I got some ideas that when I do the actual dance that I can like add movements and better movements and that. I saw a green feather in one of the trays and um, in, the, in the trays there were little things that you can touch in microscope and look at on the computer and tell us all about it and that. We went into the investigate part and I looked at the snake skin and all the patterns on it. On the bottom they have bits so they when they slither along, it is hard for them and they just find it easy. I'm moving my hips so they sway and turn us around. I think it's really good to make cross-curricular links so it's not just a one-off visit, so that you can link it into your curriculum, certainly through science and through art, and as I've done, through dance. The children would be able to perform their dance and, and link with other children in the community to share their ideas. So it would be a lovely celebration of achievement. Thank you.